sometimes it was good, sometimes it was awful. I could not hear myself. Let's let's start with the lesson then. So I'm going to share the screen. You see, this is why I don't like because I get distracted and then I lose myself. So, discussion first part, uh, first part lecture second part. Lecture means that uh, you are going to talk as well. So, <laughs> don't think that uh, you you have nothing to say here. So, in the discussion part, it's very simple. I'm going to show you the. Um, what we are we have discussed. I'm going to maybe call you by name or maybe you could say your name. And and then you could, could uh, tell us I choose this uh, research or this product for this article and I think this is relevant for this and this and this reason. It should be it should be fast so it shouldn't be you should go directly to the point. And I noticed yesterday with some of you that um, the, on the foundations of HCI, you had to read more or less 100 papers, so you should have <laughs> lots of resources to, <laughs> to have an, uh, as an example. So let's, let's start by doing that. But before I share the assignment, I would like to have some how here. So this is our environment. I'd like to see it in, in this way as a classroom morning. Every time every time we have a lesson, in between lessons or we have either reading discussions or we have reading assignments. This is clear for you, correct? So uh, I had to, to make it more clear, I had here in the course the schedule. So if you see here, there is a, um, a PDF where I explain what you need to do throughout the, the lessons and in between the lessons. Another thing that I had here was the feedback table. This is important. So basically, I want to see lots of smiles. If I see lots of smiles, then I'm happy and you are happy as well. So the feedback table is very simple. Uh, I have your name here. I didn't update it yet this week. So I have your name here. And every time you, you uh, finish an assignment or an activity, I have a smile. If there is a, an M, it means that is missing. If there is an I, means that you did, but it is incomplete. I'm, I'm waiting for feedback. So in the end, I want to see all of this with smiles. If I see all of this is with smiles, you'll be happy because you, you already passed the course and I'll be happy because I achieved my, uh, my, my uh, objectives that was to teach you. Basically, you need to, to participate in the activities sometimes here, you see, present readings, discuss, participate in the discussion. This also counts as a smile. Sometimes I had two smiles, sometimes I had one smile. It depends on uh, amounts of smiles uh, that you have. Then it goes here, participation. So <clears throat> then you have uh, reading assignments, you have reading discussions, user research, design critic, you already start working on this part, and present reporting in the, in the end. All of this I calculated with a, 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 as 100%. So please, from time to time, have a look at this feedback table. I, I, I'm going to update it throughout the course. Sometimes I make mistakes. If I make something, uh, if I note something 
or if you noted something that is not correct, let me know and I will correct it. Yeah? Yes? This is about uh, the course. Um, that's it. So let's go to the reading discussions uh, assignment. So in the reading discussions, we had two things to do. I, I had like a teaser down here, uh, a small article, a small video, so you understand more or less where I wanted to, you to go. Then I ask you to uh, select the source and uh, describe why this source is relevant to, to, for human centered computing and why it's, you think it's an interesting resource for us to read. This is not for me, it's, it's also for me, but it's not only for me, it's, it's also for you. So some of you had, had it here, some of you had it here. So maybe I could start with the ones that, that share their sources with everyone. And then I continue with the ones that uh, just post their sources uh, on the on the Google Classroom. And those who post only for me, I would like them to share with your colleagues as well. Because some of you are not here in the classroom. So the ones that are at the distance, I would like them to look at them. And uh, I will have an assignment for them as well, for those who are at the distance. So, Sylvia? Uh, just, describe what you're in. just quickly tell tell us what was the source that you choose and why you think it is relevant for. It's something that uh, is struggling you, this, uh, the, this growing up of artificial intelligence and how we can design. Oh, no, not me. But <laughs> not you? Uh, but it was interesting to see like, a slide how it's uh, What are the things? Uh, she described uh, some designers. Okay. Like, uh, like Mm -hmm. and the AI to do them. Oh, tools in that sense. So tools to support the design, yes, exactly. the process of like design. design. I was, I was uh, thinking it was more in the, in, in the terms of supporting more transparent uh, uh, design of the, uh, the applications. Transparency. Well, no, no. Using AI to, uh, to help them to yeah. share. Mm -hmm.
the, 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 the ones that write the books will not who will vanish and who, uh, the people will replace the, 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 the writers and so on. And it, this that didn't happen. And so I, and with the Industrial Revolution, this also happened this year. And now we have this uh, automatic uh, and robots and artificial intelligence and how they are kind of taking out our jobs. This can happen as well. I, I do agree with this uh, master student and the blog that it, it cannot be humans cannot be replaced because we need to be creative and only humans can design solutions. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Maybe. <laughs> okay. And yeah. why why do you think this is important? To know this is important for you. Do you know? Do you think designers in the future are going to use maybe the students as a supporter for the design process? Well, I think that the students for design process are very Did, did you understand this point? You want an example? Yes. Uh, for, for example, in um, this, correct me if I'm mistaken, but for me, this is a, uh, uh, you, you know, the beginning of filming? The beginning of filming was made with everyone in dining positions. And each position in milliseconds was a different uh, design, a different sketch. And this was handmade. And then it came, it came tools that enable to, for designers to design the initial position and then uh, indicate what was the last position. And then the computer can calculate the movement throughout. So the computer kind of drop, drafted the in between uh, movements. So the designers didn't have this hard job of doing each movement you, you know disney's movies it's a, it's a good example so this was the this is the tool that you are, that you are uh, discussing about so tools to help to speed up the process of design what happens is that the tools cannot replace the beginning and the end cannot replace the designer per se the idea is the designer it's their own possessions but the, the process can be facilitated throughout its AI machines and the AI algorithms. That's it. Because say yes or no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes, that was the idea. So this is an interesting approach. This is important. Why? Because as designers, we want to make our job easy uh le with less cost and uh and and we wanted to make it more perfect as possible if we have tools that can help us to do that then in the future it's better carol yeah, yeah. uh i read a study that uh, talked about how sketching and drawing can uh, help us invent new things uh, it was quite interesting for me because most of the times I have an idea and then I start drawing, but they focus more on the side when you start drawing and sketching before you actually have an idea of what you want to do. So uh, it was a new approach for me kind of because I have never done it that way. The process for me is like the opposite way kind of. But when, we, when you sketch, uh, uh, do you do it on paper or directly? Uh, on paper, slightly, yeah. And and uh, and this process uh, happens how? This uh, this using the technology for for helping you to sketch better. 
uh, most of the times I have an idea of something already in my mind, like very clear idea, uh -huh. and then I start sketching it how it would look like in real life and uh, so on. But yeah. So, so how do you see this to be used in a human centered computing? In the design process. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. So, uh, uh, we are going to work in the next lessons with one thing that I call design fiction. Have you heard about it? Or future design or something like this? So, this is, this, this is a, a process of design. So, the design is something that is interactive. You need always to validate your ideas with the, the potential users so you understand if what you have in your mind is what they, they need. So this is a interactive process that goes around all the time. So you have an initial moment where, where you have the concepts, you have the research and you have, you have the idea. Then you kind of draft something and then you need to validate if this so this is the evaluation part to validate if this makes sense or not and then maybe you come back and you reflect on your idea and you improve it so this sketching process is an important process in the conceptualization phase where you have the concept but you don't want to have this, uh, you want, don't want to go further without validating the concept. And sketching is the fastest way to kind of show your idea to the users and to ask them, what do you think about this? This makes sense. And to ask them to contribute as a feedback. This is one way. So you, you sketch, you show, and you do interviews to validate the concept, and then they can help you to improve the concept, and then you, you go to a, uh, to a prototype phase. So you, you go forward when the concept is solid and the idea makes sense. This is uh, one way of doing the design. Another way is that you have an idea of a technology, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's a futuristic idea, so you see this technology to be applied in the future. But you don't know if this technology as a future technology will be accepted by the users, will be uh, adopted by the users. So you use these futuristic scenarios where you describe the scenarios, it can be sketches, it can be text, like a, a, a narration, and you can describe the scenarios and you can ask the user does this make sense in the future? So if we design this technology, this context of use, do you think you are going to use? What are the major concerns that you have? What are the major problems that you have? And how we can improve this? Because users can help you to improve. Was, was more or less on that direction? Yeah, they used comics and storyboards to yeah. show how they would use them. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice idea to do it instead of text because nowadays no one wants to read a long text. So um, we did that. We did. Uh, we we had uh, two pa two pages of future scenarios with text, and we had to 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 um, to uh, had a audio as well because no one wanted to read two pages of text. So we are going to use text, and I'm going to ask you, as, a, as a, our assignment, maybe to do sketches so people can easily understand what goes in your mind and can provide feedback in a quick way. This is a, a good point, yeah. Thank you. Christo? Um, I read a paper about uh, utilizing brain responses from uh, humans. Who are performing simple uh, recognition tasks like labeling, and uh, it was called brain, brain sourcing, and uh, it is really similar to crowdsourcing. It's, it's currently in the field. and uh, it, it was interesting to me because uh, I think uh, that uh, brain interfaces and uh, using uh, our brains in a crowdsourcing manner 
seems like it could be in the future. Uh, how do you see we that we use our brains in the future and with brains interfaces? Do you know what is a brain interface? Do you have uh, any idea? Just say it. How we are using our brains? N no, brain interface. What what it means? So uh, uh, the, this Elon Musk ship <laughs> that we we kind of attach to the brain, and and then the brain wave make us, for example, to do some something. Is that your idea? Envy. Do you think it is possible to uh, to attach? some brain interface instead of a wheel of a car and we drive with brains? We are doing it right now, but by sensors. Not inside your brain, but by sensors. And, and also, um, I think the brain interface is a good technology also for those who have some impairment uh, and, and lack of capability. For those who cannot talk, cannot move, this is a good position. I know that there is tests about autopiloting planes as well. <laughs> I will not go on, on, on one of that, but I know that it just happens. We have um, <clears throat> um, a EEG. So we are going to ask you maybe, or give you a demonstration on how to kind of read our brain um movement or brain waves so we can act and do something right now what we have in our lab is eye tracker so eye tracker also is can be a, a kind of a brain interface because through this so how how does it, this work how, how a, a mouse work if you look at the mouse let's imagine this is a mouse so we move the mouse and by moving the mouse, we are giving some input to the computer or to the graphic user interface. And then when we reach the icon, we click and we say we want to open. Brain interface is the same way. So we have this EEG in our head and it can read several layers of the brain waves, several, several uh, brain waves. And by this, I don't know how <laughs> yet, <laughs> but our brain could, could say, open this document for me. This happens somehow, but it needs to be direct. The problem, yes, with brain, brain uh, wave technology or brain, uh, brain technologies is that it's too much noise. So the, 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 we collect uh, with the mouse what we do is that we collect movement and position, just, just that. And then when we click, we, we collect the number one or zero, click or not click. But with brain waves, our brain is always active. And in between, it's, it's lots of... Um, so you see the amount of uh, noise for us to identify the right information to say this is the information to open a file is not yet there. We need to, as, as a researcher, we need to clear up this. Ben, I don't know if you know Ben, Ben is using it and is studying and he done, done a couple of experiments on that. If you are interested, it, it could be a, a very good uh, person to talk with. So we are st st studying this or on um, on how we can identify um, biological um, feedback of trust uh, using uh, EEG. So it's creating a kind of a machine learning algorithm that can identify the patterns when our brain can somehow move when we see a risky situation. So if we feel risk, then we can identify which, which, uh, which information let us know this is a risky moment or the, the party or the user is feeling risk. And then we identify this 
risk associated with trust. So lack of trust. That's yet still is still very, very, very in the initial place. Just what is how our uh, body defects are aligned with our consciousness. So, really, your brains uh, do the same with your consciousness or not? Are they in the same way, in the same direction? It's really interesting. It is, it is, but it's very hard to measure. Because imagine you, you have 100 people in the room and you have five in the room, and that one is the class. You have to clean up all the others, and in the middle of the room, maybe it's in the middle, it's like finding water. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very difficult. And then, when you identify that person, you need to see for sure if what that person is doing is reacting to trust. So, emotion is more or less uh, okay. So I would say that there are other things besides brain waves or brain interfaces that can help us. For example, heart uh, sensors that can, uh, can uh, measure how our heart beats. So if our, our heart increases, rhythm increases, maybe this means that you are stressed or you are in the stress position. Maybe this is easy to identify and associate with something like joy, stressing, or, or fear, or trust. But with brain, you, you see it's too much information, so we need to select this, this part. But it's a very interesting. So in the future, how do you see this being applied? I thought it would be a sci-fi <laughs> You are a sci-fi fan as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really interesting in talking with the also uh, talked about the different problems and questions were really good. Since there were uh, three main things, were, uh, one was uh, that uh, the data could be collected from someone higher up, like a uh, collector of everything they're thinking, and uh, in a sense, it was seen as medical data as well. Yeah. Yeah, it can be it can be used in, in the medical field. So there is a project that uh, we we propose that we are trying to use EEG as a, as to diagnose um, initial um, signs of dementia. So the idea to, uh, it, it can it can go to the to the to this field. So I see it more in e health applications than in other applications like autopilot, <laughs> definitely. But in he, he health, it's is mainly to diagnose uh, things. So the, the problem with the, the diagnose and the fears of ethics is that how do you know if the algorithm that we apply, apply has algorithms and machine learning is data. And the data is the data that we collect every day. How do you know that data is accurate mm -hmm. and uh, it's not biased? Mm -hmm. Because then you rely, rely on a decision of an algorithm that don't understand how you reach to that decision. Because the amount of information that he collects and he processes and he reach, to reach that decision, it's too much for us. We, we cannot calculate, so we need to rely on this. And this comes to ethics. How do we use these algorithms? And how? what are the implications in the future of society if this is bias or if this doesn't provide the correct information? This is, for, for one hand, is good because we can identify um, initial, uh, initial diseases quickly because now we don't rely on medi uh, on um, on um, doctors to 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 have this knowledge and the experiences. We rely on an algorithm to help doctors to do it. But the doctor needs to be there to make the decision. The noc the doctor is the one that is ethical responsible for the patient, and he needs to take the decision, not the algorithm. And if the doctor want, uh, needs to take the decision, it comes the ethical part that the doctor needs to be informed 
how the algorithm reached to that decision. What was the data that he collected? What was the information? So, so the, the reliability of the data is an important aspect in this process. For example, I have an example in uh, Apple Watches uh, in a point down with a uh, bigger force than it used to be, then it will uh, ask, do I, do I call SOS? Yeah. And that's it. If my uh, husband is doing two down with the, with the watch every time when he's uh, falling, do I call SOS? <laughs> that comes with another problem. So basically, when this happens in a recurrent way, it's like call, a calling wolf. So when when we need to call an SOS, it's we already don't rely on the watch because we already say no, 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 and we switch off the the the, the application because we are fed up. So when we see this to be helping us and when we see this to be a kind of uh, annoying uh, um, and, uh, and nudging um, um, future. This is it's a, it's a very blurred line. But let, let's come back to, the, to, the, to the, the future scenarios that I want you to use and to, to work on it in the, in the near future. Um, one of the scenarios is a very interesting one. So I, I think Julia already studied this one. It's about uh, students in the future and, uh, and uh, um, a brain wave, a brain interface uh, that can they, they wear while they are doing homework so the teachers can know if they are working or not. So this is the scenario that they need to wear at home and the story goes around a teacher parent conference where the par the teacher is asking uh, to the to the parents if the, the if they realize that your your son is not working and then and then the the, the <laughs> he realized that a way to trick the system is to play games while he's wearing <laughs> the brain interface. So he's not studying, but the teacher is, is, is thinking that, that, that he's studying, and the parent is happy because he's studying and he's playing games at the same time. So you see this, uh, this happened. This, is, this, is, this was supposed to be a future scenario, and, uh, um, but this happens in reality. So with the coronavirus uh, issue in the, in the past uh, month, we had to switch all, we, all we had to switch to, uh, to online. And one issue of uh, high school teachers had, and also uh, higher education teachers had, was the assessment. How do we do the assessment online? How do we make sure that the person that is doing the, 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 the exam is the person is the correct person, and how would we make sure that he does the exam? So there was a tool that enables them. I don't recall the name of the tool, but uh, I have it on the. I, I can uh, look for it later. Doesn't matter. There was a tool that enables them to kind of do a uh, 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 um, a form to do the exam. My kids use Go Formative to do it, and this tool is run with an algorithm. AI and what the students realize is that how to trick <laughs> the algorithm to get higher, uh, higher, um, higher grades. So they did the first one and they had a bad grade. They did the second one and then they realized that the, 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 the answer was not corrected by the teacher but by the algorithm because the, answer, the, the, the feedback came back very fast. So they realized that the, the way to treat the algorithm was not to write a good text, but to write the right uh, words. So instead of writing a text, they had a bunch of words <laughs> in the answer. And they, they all, always get a good answer, because a uh, good grade, because they, they, they pick up the words. Sometimes the text may, make no sense, but they, they had the words there. So they had 
you see? So tricking the system is going to always uh, happen. This futuristic scenario that I'm talking about, it's happening nowadays. And it also shows the creativity of our people. Yeah. Like how to go past all that. We are creative persons. Always. So Carlos is not here. And it choose a Wire magazine article. Uh, and this concern with COVID uh, in the, in the, in this um, in this uh, Asian countries, South Korea, Taiwan, and Singapore. And societal issues. If you want to read, uh, it's it's a good one. So I, I know I know a little bit about Singapore. The other ones I don't know. So in the beginning of uh, COVID, they were uh, doing very well, and then suddenly they had to kind of shut down because uh, the the numbers had rise a lot, and they had some issues. But Singapore is a country that is very similar to Estonia. So everything is is online. So they have e-government and e-facilities and so on. So, from that point of view, you should uh, you should also understand if you want to design for and understand the uh, foreign cultures. Maybe this could be a nice one. I had a student doing a thesis, and he did it during this uh, close of the country, and his major concern was that there are. Different culture, uh, different um, different cultures in in Singapore that uh, sometimes don't speak uh, English, and the e service they have there are almost uh, relying on English language. So these illiterate people could not use service during the shutdown. That that was his major concern, and they, they, they he was trying to understand how to improve the banking system, for example, so people could use certain communities could use the banking system because it was not available in in a Chinese language and other language as well. Anastasia, no. So. Annette? Uh, so I read the article about uh, uh, evolution of uh, environment centric design, and it is described as uh, a new design practice uh, which can be applied in HCC. Uh, and uh, it's like a new approach that uh, services and uh, products uh, wouldn't be developed only human-centered, but also environment-centered. So there would be uh, non-human uh, personas when uh, they are. Do you think environment-centered could be a, a next term in the future? Instead of looking at the human, humans, so we look at the environment? Yes, because uh, environment is a part of us, and we can't just ignore it. But then, if you look at humans, you need to look at the environment first, because you said it's part of us. Yes. We cannot not. So my 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 question. I I don't have an answer, and you might not have as well. But my question is, aren't we look at the environment already when we look at human women uh, humans and when they are in this environment, or shall we focus, and or, sh or aren't we look enough? That's why they are pushing towards this environment idea, center idea, because we don't reach yet there. So you remember these layers of a social technical system? Do you? Yeah. So in this part, it's basically hardware and software. And then we had the, 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 the human part, and then we had the community part. So many people together. 
what you are saying had one more layer or had a bubble here and they, look at they, this basically yes the hierarchy of the pyramids uh -huh. it wouldn't be like human at the top and everything else below like uh, sea uh, animals and everything but it would be like uh, more of a round that uh, they're equal like not human it, it makes sense. I'm going to discuss this in the slides later on. Is that um, the way technology is nowadays, it's like embedded in everywhere. So it's uh, surrounding us. Technology is the, the, this big bubble. And within this big bubble, people use technology in different ways. Different cultures adopt it and use it in different manners. In spite of, in spite of we are in digital culture uh, bubble, inside of this digital culture, different cultures find new ways and innovative, like, like this, uh, this, this kid that find a new way to trick the system. So what you are saying, and correct me, because I didn't read the, the source. What you are saying is that we need to look to how each person uses and how it can uh, adjust to the, this bubble, the environment that he's doing it. Correct? No. Uh, it's, uh, it's more or less uh, that how uh, services and products are developed, like more in sustainable manner. Oh, sustainability. So yes. you, you go more for the sustainability of the... Okay, I understand. You know this uh, sustainable design approach? Can, can you explain? So reuse the technology, like we reuse our clothes. <laughs> we should also reuse the technology and readjust the existing technology. When designing, sometimes we have this mindset that we need to design new things. We need to stop using this mindset. We need to use new things and maybe look of what they already exist and how we can use it in different manners. How can uh, this this is goes a little bit behind that the idea that we need a design is to use uh, or to create new things. The design is to be creative in the sense that we can look up what exists and maybe create a new tool or a new thing or a new uh, a new way of working and doing it and contribute to the environment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Ali? No. Okay. this in, uh, in our lesson, if I have time, I want to make sure, <laughs> uh, because I, I didn't expect this discussion to be so late, it's so long. Um, one thing is that we move from an era that we, we are the screen to non-screen uh, technology. And with this, we can embed technology in our own body. So uh, the, the technology is kind of uh, part of us. And when it becomes part of us, then it becomes the, 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 the issue of uh, trust, issue of ethics, and this, uh, this question that I, I, I posed early with e of systems. It can be good because it can control uh, our, our blood rate and our sugar levels, and it can help us to, to get better. 
unhealthy, but on the other way around, it comes to the Apple Watch thing. When it becomes a nuance and we stop, uh, um, we stop looking at it as a, a benefit and you, we start looking at it as, as, uh, as something that is annoying us and it's not credible. So we stop uh, looking at it as, as something that is improving our lifestyle and we start looking at it something that is, it's, we don't want to because it's annoying us all the time. It's, 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 it's getting us uh, too much attention. An example of that, and I'm going to give my own example, is um, Fitbit. I used to add one, and then I, I got tired of it. The information that it provided me was not useful enough. And uh, I look at it and I was thinking, this is not true. <laughs> Only these steps, I walked much, much more. So I start, stopped using it because I, I, I stopped believing in the information that was there. Mainly because I didn't want to. <laughs> but no, I'm not kidding. I, I, I just, I, I thought it was not useful for, for, for my point of view. The same happened with not using um, Apple Watch. I I I I I I I thought on on the idea, and then I thought on the. Um, but this is my personal view, not yours. So I thought that Apple Watch Watch is going to always get nudge me and get uh, get me uh, notifications of the email, the message, and so on. And instead of helping me, it's getting me more stressed because I, I always get the notifications of everything and I, I get stressed instead of, uh, of uh, getting relaxed because I'm uh, um, aware and connected all the time. So this sense of uh, being connected all the time was, was, uh, was not good for, for me. But I know that in society and other people uh, uh, prefer to be connected all the time. And they are used to it. They don't get stressed because of it, but the other way around. So they 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 simply get more relaxed because they know that they are always aware of what's happening. You see two different people, two different perspectives. As a designer, we need to realize this: that we have two different patterns. And when designing our tools, we need yes. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, actually, it's not an issue. And nowadays, in the academic and the standard university, they, they do research and they do it actually for several years already. So it's called just in time intervention. Uh, it's a different issue when, when people are so stressed because of interruption of technology. And what they can, the ideal technology to provide this excellent experience, they don't exist so far. So they in Stanford they, they design the program some kind of the algorithm who can understand what is happening to you right now by collecting the data around you and the personal data and try to uh, notify you in this specific moment when you are really more comfortable with it. You see the point? They look at different people and understood what was the problem. The level of notification. Some people like to be notified all the time. Some people like, like to be notified only in certain moments of time. It's called personalization, design for personalization. So you personalize your, your profile and when you want to be nudged, what you want to be nudged and so on. In my, in my case, it doesn't work. I don't have the patient to, person <laughs> to, to click in everything. So I decided not to use it and get stressed in, in the right moments. So when I'm at university, not when I'm at home, because most of my stress comes from here. Uh, my heart went to slow, slower, mm -hmm. and they can understand that uh, I was sleeping and they didn't send me messages or uh, uh, muted all the calls. 
it's I think I didn't, uh, I didn't even have to do it. I think that this uh, has, uh, is also happened in Apple Watch. You have the, the, the possibility of saying that you are sleeping. Yeah, yeah. But, but if the garment is uh, like automatically, automatic. uh, laying down and it didn't uh, like answer the calls, uh, send you messages. So let's come to the sustainability part. We need to look of what exists to create new designs and maybe reuse what exists already. Our ideas come from uh, from experience, looking at the past, going to the future. Ah, uh, and now this is me, Buena, and uh, this is a uh, all together, but it's already spoke about it, that we have to focus on uh, this article I read that uh, it's enter enterprises to environment humans to human. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to ask questions for what, why, is it there already, are we doing something, are we doing something uh, uh, that is uh, making sense, uh, does it uh, create value and, uh, and uh, the human uh, nature needs knowledge because we are coming from one perspective, we are coming from the cave and we are now here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, everything, uh, when we are Feeling uncomfortable, we are thinking why it's uncomfortable. We need to change it, and uh, this is what makes uh, human and design. How do you do that in design? As a designer, how do you do that? Think or, or improve. H how do you improve? You have something that you want to improve. How do you know that what to improve? Well, we have to ask questions for what. For whom uh, and why we are doing it, and there. Uh, this idea can be a already existing one, can be a new one, but we need to validate all the time. We need to ask questions. We need to do interviews. We need to observe. And a different experience create opportunity for something new. Because uh, if I know something that I like to know, or mm -hmm. I can know something that I don't know, we can create something. Group of the designers needs to be multicultural, multifaceted, multi background with multi backgrounds, mm -hmm. because ideas come from difference. And there's one movie, The Opposite. I think it's a science fiction movie about a guy that is white or sleep for five hundred years. He comes to America, and uh, that brain. Human brains don't think that much. They're just uh, not vegetables, but they don't think they have those fats to answer when you're going to doctors. What the pictures and buttons are you giving to birth? Is there a knife in your head? Is there a bullet in your head? Or what are just only buttons? Yeah. And machines that are. Science fiction movies are very good ones to use as future scenarios. So instead of text, instead of catch, sketches, you can also create movies. And there are a couple of movies like this already exist. This is this the the, the this future scenarios are like a stimuli. You are stimuli your idea. You are uh, asking because you need to ask to understand. First, you need to do a research. And you need to use it, use different manners of research. You cannot go and ask, do you think this is good? Because it doesn't come from that. So there are a couple of techniques that you need to apply to do this research. Anthropologists are a good, uh, a good source to understand the, the environment. And it's a good, uh, a good person to have in your team if you want to understand how to better design things. One uh, thing more is uh, when you create something, you have to take it with uh, caution. Because when you're creating something that doesn't make any sense or value, and it's a thing, then it's uh, creating waste. It's not just waste. I, I ask in my, my course, in the, in the other course on uh, risk, trust, and security, not risk, security, trust, and, uh, and privacy, for them to, to see the movie, uh, Netflix movie, Social Dilemma. 
this is a good example. So, so uh, the, uh, this documentary is a good do documentary in the terms of to understand the implications on, on what you design for society. It, uh, some people, some designers, for example, the designer that uh, designed the like button for Facebook, are in the, that documentary. What is telling us is that when he designed the like button, he didn't foresee the implications that such a small button had into society in the future. So what we design, we need to look at the future as well and see what are the implications of, of that. And um, I, I'm sorry, but now I would like to move forth for, a, for with the lesson. For those uh, for those who didn't have the chance to to explain what they read and what what they why they think they are important for the for this course and for the future of your um, career and as an HCI or interaction designer, please read uh, read this. Have a look, and if you find the source interesting, then look at the source. the The purpose of the discussion is for you. Uh, is to open your mind. We are all different, we all think differently, and we've seen this from the examples that you pick up. They are all different. Not one example is, is, is equal, but in the end, they all contribute to the same thing, design, and how to design better technology. Correct? <laughs> wrong no <laughs> i hope not so i i need to move forward to the, to with the lesson i'm not going to provide all all things once more i had too many slides too many ideas but this lesson is important with um because it complements the readings that you are going to do this two weeks the next two weeks so the reading is about um the future so why we need to understand the future, why we need to predict the future to create better designs. That's the idea. So as I was telling you, to understand the future, we need to look at the past and understand how things evolved. One thing that we understand with technology is that technology will very fast. So um, technology and um, health are, or medicine are two areas that go very, very fast. So what you read in, your, in books, it's the past already. You need to look at articles, publishing articles. In terms of research, this is what happens. What you read in books is already a, 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 a sum up of what we learned, but five years ago. And the uh, because the technology evolves so fast, you are already reading what ha happened in the past. You cannot predict the future by looking at the books. You can use it and reuse it because they are past practice and they are solid, so they are not so new like the articles. So the articles is just suppositions because they are not tested yet, it's just ideas. The books are something that it works. It's proven that it works because it was tested by many. But it's something that reflects technologies that are past technologies, reflects the past uh, use of uh, uh, designing technologies. One thing that you need to understand, computers in the beginning were just calculators, just processing things. The purpose was to calculate something, calculate large amounts of numbers, it, and mainly the interaction you did with this was mainly through text of pinching cards. So it was, it was not very interactive, just a, a very sophisticated calculated, the calculating machine. Then when the personal computers came, then you start to spread out technology throughout households. Everyone has a personal computer. And this 
revolution happened with the graphical user interface. So we tried to mimic the physical desktop towards the digital. And you try to mimic the, so transform what was in physics to the digital world. And this was the main idea was to support us in our activities, to facilitate our activities. Then it came the internet. So information accessed everywhere. Nowadays, children don't go to the library to look for sources. They go to the internet. They ask everything, ask Google everything. So the way knowledge was produced and changed uh, and, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, distributed change here with the internet. Then it came, came the mobile. Everyone had a phone. So everyone had a, a communication medium next to them. So everyone could communicate with uh, uh, at any time, at any place, this change here. Then it comes the ubiquitous computer. So technology is everywhere. Technology is on, on our body. And uh, we can measure everything. So this is more or less the evolution. And if you see the evolution, it's very fast. So it came in our generation. And with this uh, evolution uh, very fast, what happens is that each person or each generation has different views of technology. So my kids have a different view of technology that I have. My, uh, my parents have a different view of technology that I have. And these are generations that use all the same tools. But they, they think different. They see the technology in different way. And one thing that happened as well is that we now cannot live without it. So we shop, we play games, we, we do most of our things with technology. So we cannot live without it. So if you look at here, we started with the mouse, virtual desktop, uh, and uh, we started with the idea of bringing the physical to the digital world. This is, was very, very, uh, a very beginning of technology. Then, then with the mobile technology, we try to mimic what we call it natural interactions to the digital world because we use our fingers, we pinch. We use our voice, so we use our face. This is natural interactions. We try to use, uh, to close the, the physical to the digital or close the digital to the physical. That was the idea. Then with the senses and everything else, we may, may maybe blur this, these interactions and now technology is everywhere, so uh, we integrate the movement of, of our body, the brain interface, that is an, a good example of this, with the technology, with the computer. So we are kind of one in this case. And a good example is, is the smartwatches. This is a good example. You wear this everywhere, so it's getting data, your data is being collected all the time. You have the phone with you, your steps, your GPS location, everything is, is with you. So you bring everything. So your body is part of it. Another thing that happened with technology is almost everyone has a phone, a mobile phone, a smartphone, even people in the developing countries. They, they cannot afford um, a computer, personal computer, but they can afford a uh, phone. I can, I can tell you a story. It, was, it happened almost 10 years ago. No, more than 10 years ago. With me in Mozambique, I was traveling uh, in the, the only road that, that they have, uh, the, the good roads. 
uh, they have other roads, but the only uh, they called national road. And um, I, I see a big truck, and this is normal there. So a big truck full of things, and a guy holding with one hand and one foot on the back part and traveling like this. And I thought it was very interesting, this scenario. So you see uh, a very, like a truck, uh, no, like this, like a truck full of people and a guy here. I don't know how he was holding, but he was holding. So I, I, I tried to take a photo. So I, I pick up my phone. I was trying to take him a photo. Suddenly, he looked at me. He saw me taking the photo. It to, he took out his phone and they took a photo of me. Yeah. In that position, with only one hand. And you see? So we could, he could not afford to travel by bus. So he was, it, he was using the, the, the truck, but he had a mobile phone with him. So everyone has a mobile phone. Even the phone that had a camera. <laughs> Even the phone uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm talking 10 years ago. So with this, like I was telling, if we have a phone, if we have the smartwatch with us and more things, data is collected. So what happens? is that we live now in an era that digital has emerged or merged with physical space and all our movements, all our steps, all our things are collected. This is the content information or the data. And what we are trying to do now is trying to bring the the digital to mimic the physical with robots for example so we are trying to make robots to become more emotional and they create this this blurring even more the link between what is machine and what is the human being <clears throat> We are trying to find new ways to communicate. That's why we have these emotional robots. That's why we have Siri. That's why we have Alexa. That's why we have different kinds of ways to communicate. So we live in this part of the social and affective communication. One thing that changed completely is that we become the producers of information and at the same time we are consumers of information. So information, knowledge is not seen in the same way as it was seen before. We now reuse a lot others' content. We do copy-paste a lot and we post for we use videos and we criticize things. So the way we do knowledge completely change. The way we learn change. The way we work changed. The source that I'm asking you to read is this one, Being Human in the Year 2020. It was written before. So that's why they are saying 2020, but I think it's a good source. And what they are saying, basically summarized here. Um, the idea is that we create the uh, augmented reality. We, we kind of bring the digital to the physical, the physical to the digital, and this all makes with it. But then, with this merge and this blur, we created some issues. So now we are concerned with some things like mobile digital traces, internet digital traces, privacy, security, social implication, uh, behavior change, ethical concerns, 
how to protect children, how to protect the elderly. So this is something that is coming as well. This happens because machines are everywhere and machines can collect data, our, our data. So machines know more about us than we know ourselves. They, they can understand much more. So from a simple mouse and click movement, from a simple screen, we become uh, to, the, to the place where algorithms can say, you have this personality and you are going to do this. Or please drop this because I know that you like this, <laughs> even if you don't want to. So it becomes, you see the change? It's huge, at least for me. <laughs> So, <clears throat> what some people are saying, that we need to be careful and we need to prevent machines and algorithms and technology and big corporations to surveil us is not going to happen. We are too much dependent on technology. So, we cannot stop this. Because it brings benefits. And if you look, uh, uh, I'm studying trust, and one thing is you need to, to trust something or to use uh, to, to, to trust something, you need to look at the balance between the benefits and the risks. And so far, the benefits are higher than the risks. Yes. This machine. Yes, exactly. People, like you are saying, designers are not going to be replaced with machines. Yes. So maybe we should have some computer operators <laughs> We need to concentrate on people because the people are the ones that are doing this. And we are not going to stop doing this. Because the econom uh, economical benefits are high. So when people are realizing that they cannot control their digital data, even if they promote open source, we cannot control our digital tracing, our digital personal. We cannot go out of the digital world anymore. I, I read something of a guy that was trying not uh, to have any digital trace, or I saw a documentary, I, I have no idea, and he was telling that it's, it's impossible. You need to live in the forest and have no contact with anyone. Because even when you live in the forest and you don't have contact with anyone, if you live in Estonia, you have to have an ID card. And if you have to have an ID card, you have a digital trace. <laughs> but you need to have a, a card, a citizenship. No? When you're born, you have already got It's automatic. So your mother needs to kind of decide to sit your part. If not, then you become a fugitive in that sense. Because the first thing that you need to do is to have your um, identity and register it. You become bad to society. This is the dissolution. That's what I thought. So, uh, <laughs> really, really, I was not so concerned with this because I thought, oh, so much data. No one is going to calculate this. No one is going to predict what I do, what I don't do. But with machine learning, <laughs> this is what they do. So nowadays, it's not possible anymore. They do 
the Chinese government does that. I thought, oh, okay, uh, where they are going to calculate everything and, and see me a, a little dot in the middle <laughs> of the wall? No way. They're doing it. Uh, the child is not prepared to school at like, certain age. They start to look at the child. They cross the data. No. They are constantly looking for connections in the national registry to find those like disappeared people or or activating cards that uh, actually belong to people who have died. I'm not saying that they are bad governments and they have different intentions, but as we were saying, people change and they are different. So we need to be concerned with people, how they think, how they, we need regulations, we need rules, we need uh, uh, policy making. We need that, definitely. So one, uh, one uh, interesting uh, summary of this, comes from this lady here. Uh, I would advise you to see it. I will not go much further. I would so just say that we nowadays change the way we learn, the way we educate with technology. We change the way we produce content. It's no longer the same. We change cultures because these developing countries having a mobile phone and i'm saying they don't have electricity but they have a mobile phone a smartphone they have these shops where they charge for charging your phone because they don't have electricity at home but they have mobile phones we have this idea that everyone can participate everyone can create content everyone can be a consumer crowdsourcing wikipedia is a good example of that we have this global connectivity that we just discussed the governance that is a parallel governance uh, to the the actual government we have the traffic regulations you get the ticket. <laughs> it happened to me already. If you if you go too fast, it's automatic. It goes to to your email. There is no policeman there. It's just a picture, and it goes. We have the electronic identity card, the passport controls, e-health. So my doctor don't say anything to me. It just say go to the portal and see what what are the results. We have the e-commerce. We don't go out. We just do the shopping and the traffic comes home that's so nice <laughs> we have the family life changing the way we, we we maintain our social relationships the way we do online friendships digital uh, tracing the way we post things that we are doing and so on we have new ways of growing older with this healthy support technology. We have new ways of doing economy with this contactless, with these micro tags, with this sharing economies like Airbnb, crowdsourcing to get money, more authentication procedures like Smart ID. We have this economical developing countries and illiterate uh, computer illiterate people but at the same time they know how to use the smartphones and they use it in different ways than we use it we have new ways of doing things new values are emerging new skill sets and all of this comes to the debate on reflecting on how we do design things, how we do this change. If we are not aware of this evolution and what is happening nowadays, how can we design things for the future? So we need to be aware of these changes. One thing that we need to be aware of is the stock of interface stability. 
There is no one screen where we have the word, one application, close application. It's a complex system. So things change, evolve. There might not be screens at all. So we need to look at this from a, a different perspective. <laughs> the stereotype of a rock, this uh, rock star designer stopped. We need to aggregate a group of people with different perspectives, different backgrounds. And from these perspectives and different backgrounds, we, we uh, technology emerge. We need to see as designers, as enablers, as someone that, like the teacher, me, I'm just an enabler of knowledge. You could do this by yourselves. You could take online course, self-paced course, mocks. There are mocks everywhere. What my, ro my role here is to kind of select the, the information and just say, this is what I think it is important for you to learn. And then you create your own knowledge. So designers are the same. Designers are enablers are helping people to, to, to do something. Designers need to do research. They need to understand. To be an enable, you need to understand the students. If you don't understand the students, how do you know what they need? You're just imposing things. And so on. One thing that it concerns me is this technical uh, techno dependency. I said, this is creating complexity because we are depending on uh, hyper connectivity and uh, it creates more anxious forms of working. Uh, and the social norms that we expected in the past are changing. One example is how you interact with people through email. So this formal message uh, that we used to have in the past, they stopped. The way we communicate is different now because of this technology. It seems like we are all friends. <laughs> it happens, the change happens. So we need to, to realize that. The way we relate is also different. Online dating is <laughs> a new way of doing it or the way we relate at work is also different. The, w the way we play at work. So all of these are transforming uh, the interactions. And we, as a designers, we design interaction between technology and humans. If we design interactions, then we need to understand society first to design better interactions. And that's it. And uh, please have a look at the slides. Uh, there are some issues about control, but this is more related with my my perspective. So people feel some people feel that they need more control, and then this because of this dependence of technology. And that's it. Have a nice day. Please read the book chapter one and chapter two, so you understand more about what can be uh, the future of uh, technology and how you can design better, uh, better technology. For the next week, or next week not, for the next lesson, I would like you to present your results on the design critique. So the first thing that we are going to do for you to present your group work. I know that some of you already changed some of the groups. Everything is going to be in our feedback table, so the group name are there. If you see that I didn't update it yet, please let me know about the groups. And um, for the next lesson, the first thing that we are going to do is, is to have a look at this, um, at, uh, uh, at, at your work. Basically, you need to present your work. It will be formally, so, so you will come here and you will present the work that you have done in, the, in, the, in this. Um, so it will be this work here. I, uh, I had a slide share, 
So you can use the slide share. If you don't want to use the slide share, you can use your own uh, computers. But the idea of the slide share is that we can uh, share it with everyone, so everyone can see it. It's um, it's something that I didn't update the last uh, last uh, Google uh, Google note do do the pool. So I saw that you had some. Um, it's over here somewhere. The names of the groups. Oh, yeah. Here. I didn't update yet, so some names might be missing here, but this is more or less what you submitted in Doodle. If you have any questions, I'm here. So I have lessons every week. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm here on Mondays and uh, on Thursdays and Fridays. That's my. Uh, delete my name from group six. Hello? You are. I uh, am actually in the group group five with uh, Marily. Okay. Uh, group five. Yeah, I'm group five. I'm there already. I'm the first. Okay. Yeah. You see? That's why I have the feedback tape. <laughs> Just write me an email. Sometimes I take some time to answer because I have huge amount of emails, but uh, if not, then you just tell me in the, in the, in the lesson.